Hi students, I wanna take some time to help you with this activity. If you haven't done so, go to the My Documents tab in Schoology and open up your data. You can watch this video and follow along at the same time. In science, being able to manipulate and understand data is really important. So we're gonna use a spreadsheet program in order to help create our data for us. When I was in school, we had to always draw charts and graphs on graph paper, but luckily nowadays we have computers to do all the work all for us. So let's get started. Here we have our, our chart that's periodic trends. This is the chart where we're gonna be using the data to manipulate and be able to create charts from. There's also two other tabs. There's a question tab that we're trying to answer and as well as a periodic table just for convenience. Now in the questions tab, we're looking at what happens for a period and a group for these different things, atomic radius, electronegativity, and ionization energy. So let's go ahead and create a chart or three different charts to figure out that data. So in the periodic trends chart, this data is organized by name. If you notice that all the names of the elements are in order, which isn't very useful to us, what we really need to do is reorganize these elements so that they're increasing atomic number. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this little upper left-hand corner of the cells. That selects all of my data. And then in my top bar, my toolbar, I'm gonna go over and find a create a filter button. Now there is a drop down menu, but I'm just gonna go ahead and click the filter itself. It kind of looks like a funnel. All of my data changes color, but more importantly, if you notice that my headers now have these little drop down menus. That allows me to click on a header and reorganize that column, keeping all of my data the same. So here's my atomic number. I want to reorganize this data by increasing atomic number. So I'm gonna sort it from A to Z. That keeps all my data the same, but changes the order of it by increasing atomic number. That lets me compare atomic number to my other three trends, atomic radius, electronegativity, and ionization energy. And we're gonna create three graphs to be able to see that data. I'm gonna help you with one of the graphs, and then using those skills, you'll be able to do the other two graphs yourself. So I wanna go ahead and click on the atomic number column. That's one of my axes in my data graph. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hold the control button on my keyboard. That allows me to select another bit of data. And so I'm gonna go ahead and choose column D, atomic radius. I want to compare these two to each other. I wanna know what happens to my radius as my atomic number increases. Now that I have those two sets of data selected, I can go ahead and create a chart. Now in my toolbar, next to my filter view, there's an insert chart button that I'm gonna go ahead and click. And right away, it's that easy. Gone are the days where I have to do this by hand with a ruler and a pencil and figure it all out. I got a spreadsheet program to do that all for me. Now, this is what my chart should start to look like. If yours looks a little bit different, that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that the, the, the setup area and the chart editor is all the same. First, make sure that your chart type is a scatter chart. If not, you might need to go to this drop-down menu and find the scatter chart right here. Next, we wanna make sure our range is correct and we collect, selected the proper range from C to D21. And then our X axis is the atomic number. So this axis down here is pulling from our atomic number column, that's correct. Our series or our Y axis is pulling from the atomic radius, so that's correct as well. Now we're gonna add a little bit of information here that's useful. I wanna add some data to our series. I wanna add some labels. So I'm gonna go ahead in my series area, I'm gonna click this little three hamburger bun looking button, and I'm gonna click add labels. Now it's gonna just throw in those atomic numbers, which is useful, but I like to actually see the element symbol. So I'm gonna change this date, this label data from atomic number, and I'm gonna select a data range of my own. It's gonna open this pop-up menu and I'm gonna select column B. And so it's gonna pull from column B for those, tri for those uh, atomic radius labels. Notice that when I do that, it changes the labels from numbers to actual symbols, which will be very helpful. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do is just make sure my row one is headers and my column C is labels, and we're good. We can go ahead and take this chart and take a look at it. Before we do that, we are gonna start coloring this chart, so I'm gonna remove the color from this chart. I'm gonna select any one of these data points, and then the series and the color format's gonna pop up, and I'm just gonna change it to black because I wanna color it myself. 
This is great. What we're going to do is we're going to make this chart a little bit bigger. We're going to actually publish it in its own sheet. So I'm going to click this little hamburger menu right here on the chart itself and click move to its own sheet. Notice at the bottom there's a new tab that appears and I'm going to go ahead and rename this and call this atomic radius because that's the data that we're looking at. All right, this data is manipulative. We can actually hover over these things and see it and we can change some of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my questions. The first question says, as elements go from left to right across a period, what happens to the atomic radius? Well, let's take a look at our periodic table. Remember, a period is a row on the periodic table. So let's try to see what happens to this row. Lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. So let's go look at our radius and let's go find that row. All right, I see lithium is right here. I'm gonna click on this point. I'm at, in fact, I'm gonna try to double click on it. It's gonna open up my chart editor, but I wanna edit just this one point, not the series. So I'm gonna click on this point one more time with the chart editor open and my format data point comes open. I want to change the color of just this one dot to be something like red. All right, and I'm going to do that to that entire period of elements. So lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. I'm going to go ahead and try to find those elements. So here's lithium. Well, look, the next one is beryllium. So I'm going to change that point. Boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. All right, there's our first trend. We can actually see on this data, if we just kind of look at that one period on the periodic table, a trend that's happening. So if we answer this question, as we go across a period, right, what happens to the atomic radius? Well, we can see here that the atomic radius seems to decrease. So in my questions area, as elements go from left to right across a period, the atomic radius decreases. All right, let's talk about a group. If we look at the group, as elements go from top to bottom down a group, what happens to the atomic radius? So if we look at the periodic table, here's an example of a group. Group one is hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. Now let's go ahead and color those or that group on our chart. So I'm going to go back to atomic radius and I'm going to do that. The first one was hydrogen. So I see hydrogen here. Again, I'm going to double click and then single click to make sure I format that data point. Now let's color it something a little bit different. Oh, well, maybe let's color it like pink or purple. All right, hydrogen is here. The next one was lithium. Now we already colored lithium from our previous data, but we already got that data. So I'm going to recolor it purple. After lithium was sodium. So I see sodium is right here. I'm going to go on and color that one purple. And then after sodium on our chart was potassium. And potassium doesn't seem to be here, but I think it's this data point. Yes, element number 19 is potassium. It just seems that the, the label itself got pushed off the top of the chart. So I'm going to go ahead and customize this data point to be purple as well. All right, just focusing on our purple dots, as we go down a period on a periodic table, what happens to those charts? Remember, hydrogen is at the top of the chart and potassium is at the bottom of the chart. So hydrogen seems to be lower in its atomic radius than potassium. In fact, it seems that as we go down a period, the atomic radius seems to increase. So I'm going to go ahead and write that right here, increases. And that's it. Now we know the trend for atomic radius on the periodic table. And as we look at that chart, it seems to be repeating itself over and over and over again. Now, it's up to you. See if you can figure out the, the trends for electronegativity and ionization energy. You're gonna need to create two more charts. One of the charts is gonna be atomic number versus electronegativity. And the other chart is gonna be atomic number versus ionization energy. Follow the same pattern of routine that we just did for atomic radius to figure out the answers to these four questions. All right, good luck.